welcome again to this particular session. So, in the last session, we started off with the partial reposition, and I sincerely hope that by now you are having a bit of confidence now to tackle any problem on partial reposition. But it's a pretty long topic, no doubt about that, and lots of questions we have inserted in it. So, we will continue with that. 3.4, you should have had done, correct? And 3.5, now we are picking up to start this particular session. Actually, I'm not going to solve the full question now. Simply, we will <coughs> uh, explain the procedure of calculation of interest and then working part. Correct. So, Transport Limited purchased two trucks. In this particular case, two trucks costing 160000 From Auto Limited on 1st of January 2018, the terms were, so, two trucks this time have been purchased and we are supposed to pay rupees 40,000 each. Very important. 40,000 each. That means your down payment will be equal to 80,000. The remainder, now question says that you have purchased two trucks for 1,60,000. So, that means total amount is 3,20,000 as far as cash price is concerned. And you, have, you are paying 80,000 rupees as the down payment. So, whatever balance is there. Debt balance in three equal installment together with interest at 10% per annum. So that means <clears throat> this time you will have to find out the gross installment because remainder in three equal installment together with interest at 10% per annum to be paid at the end of each year. <clears throat> Further, it is mentioned that transport limited rights of 25% depreciation each year on diminishing balance method. Transport limited higher purchaser, their rate of depreciation is 25%. Transport Limited paid the installment due on 31st of December 2018, 2018 and 2019. First and second installment have been paid but could not pay the final installment. But final installment could not be paid. So, vendors Auto Limited repossessed one truck and adjusting the value against the amount due. So, one truck was repossessed out of two. That means one is repossessed. It automatically leads to the conclusion that one truck is still with the what we call buyer. The repossession was done on the basis of 30% depreciation on diminishing balance method. So, as you can see, the rate of depreciation as far as vendor is concerned, that is 30%. So, I will simply, I am not going to solve fully this particular question, correct? <coughs> because you can prepare the ledger accounts and moon over in the examination. It is being seen that of late, they are simply what we call asking the student <coughs> to <coughs> calculate interest, find out the value of the goods repossessed, just wait, and of course, value of the goods retained. So, this is your 3.5, correct? So, we start the question with 3.5. Just have a look over here. 3.5. If some of you have already done, it's fine. You can simply match your answers over here. All the solutions are with you, no doubt about that. So, first of all, we will analyze the question as we have a habit of doing that analysis. Now, in this question, you must have noticed that on 1-1-2018, one, one, 2018 correct? Let me just position myself. Hmm. So that's okay. I'm just positioning the mic also. So, now we are going to do the analysis as I told you. So, 1-1-2018 one, one, is the starting date and the first installment is supposed to be paid on 31st of 12-2018. That is end of the first year, then second year will end and second installment will become due on this particular date. And third installment will become due on 31st of 12, 2020. As far as this particular date is concerned, on this particular date we found that we purchased actually two trucks or whatever it is, correct? So, two into 1,60,000 was the price. So, 3,20,000 will become your cash price. This is your cash price. Now, if you remember, on this particular date, you are supposed to pay down payment. So, down payment, it is given in the question that you are paying down payment 2 into 40,000. That is equal to 80,000. Correct? 
because this is your cash price so whatever remaining balance is there that is equal to 240000 i think so so this 240000 denotes the cash price portion and the this particular amount is to be paid in three installments three equal installments 1 2 3 so if i am going to divide it by 3 the installment will be equal to 80000 plus interest so then it will become your gross installment. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, 80,000, this will be your second installment and plus interest. It will become your gross installment. 80,000 plus 10%. It is always better to do a bit of analysis before you start what we call solving the question. So logically in this case, pure installment is given. We will have to find the interest to know the what we call gross amount of installment. Secondly, in this particular question, you must have noticed that we have been also given as far as rate of interest is concerned that is 10 percent now rate of depreciation rate of depreciation you must note somewhere correct so that you do not commit any mistake now if you will look into the question you will find that buyer's rate of depreciation was buyer's rate of depreciation was if i am not wrong i think it was 25 percent and sellers that is vendors rate of depreciation was 30 percent on return down value basis correct 25 percent on return down value and 30 percent on return down value basis so this is the question as far as what we call uh, analysis is concerned as i told you i am going to simply do the working part so first of all we will calculate the interest as we normally do so in this particular case this, this is your solution step one computation of interest or calculation of interest in order to compute the interest you will have to write here cash price in one column this is a case of basically pure installment case correct second method of calculation of interest then gross installment and here in while framing the table in the heading we will always write gross installment whether the case is of gross installment or what we call pure installment correct and then i am going to write here interest and cash price portion we have already seen that uh, our cash price is actually 320000 isn't it or not so 320000 is the cash price and date 1 1 2018 your down payment is given to you in the question that is 80,000. So down payment you are going to write here 80,000. Now so many times I have already told you it will not contain any element of interest. The entire amount will be for cash price portion. This will be your gross installment. Down payment is known as zero installment. We are left off with 240,000. Then we will reach the end of the year. At the end of the year, I am going to write 31st of 12, 2019. The first installment will become due. But importantly, we are not having the amount of first installment. Because we are not having the amount of the first installment. So what we are supposed to do, first of all, we need to compute the amount of interest. Now, interest in this particular question is 10%. So this will be my first step. That is 24,000 will be interest. I will add 24,000 to 80,000 to get gross installment. So my gross installment will be equal to 1,4,000. Correct? Cash price portion will be 80,000. 80,000 I am going to subtract. Then we are left up with 1,60,000. On 31st of 12, 2020, again i am going again actually first of all i am going to compute the interest interest will be 16000 i will add it to 80000 to get gross installment which will be 96000 cash price portion will be 80000 
and now you are going to subtract 80,000 from here. So now balance is 80,000. 31st of 12, 2021. In fact, this should be 18, this should be 19, and this should be 20. 1 1 2018 year is. So, first year will end on 31st of 12, 2018, then 31st of 12, 2019, then 31st of 12, 2020. Under pure installment case, under pure installment case I am talking about, we are, we need not require to exercise any sort of question as I keep on saying, especially under the first case, correct? So, here you will simply compute the interest, the interest will be 8000. You will add it to 80,000 to get 88,000 as the amount of gross installment. You will write here 80,000. Correct? And now your this table will get closed. Remember one thing, default has been committed on third installment. In this question, default has been committed on third installment. That means the lifespan of the question is three years. Is it clear to you or not? It is very important to keep a track of the lifespan of the question. Why it is important? Because, so we have done the working now. We, I will create a space for me, little bit more space, right. Now we are going to do some working just to equip you better. Step number two now. Under step number two, we are going to find out value of goods, value of goods repurchased. Value, in this question, goods are trucks. So you can also write value of trucks repurchased. So many times I have already told you now while doing this particular working you need to keep an eye that you have to compute the value from the perspective of both buyer vendor and of course the buyer also. So here you are gonna write first of all vendor. Then you write buyer. And finally make the third column also loss. How many trucks have been sold? First of all, give me the answer. So, two trucks have been sold out. How many, how many trucks have been taken back? Only one. So, cost price will be 1 into 1,60,000. This is your cost price. Correct. In the column of vendor and in the column of buyer, you need to actually put up this item. Now you will compute depreciation for three years. Why? Because in this particular question we have seen that default has been committed. Default has been committed at the end of the third year. So first of all I am going to write here depreciation. Now as far as depreciation of vendor is concerned, remember one thing that is 30%. So you will write here 48,000. And as far as depreciation rate of buyer is concerned that is 25%. So you are going to write here 40,000. So respective values after the end of the first year of this particular truck is 1,12,000 in the opinion of vendor. However, buyer is of the opinion that value is 1,20,000 at the end of the first year. Now we are going to charge depreciation for second year. In the second year depreciation will be 30%, that is 33,600. And here depreciation will be 25%, that is equal to 30,000. So after having charged the depreciation for the second year, now you will compute the balance. The balance will be equal to 78,400 if my computation is correct. And I would love you to actually keep on doing the calculations also. Because sometime when you simultaneously teach and write, sometime error may creep in inadvertently inadvertently means unintentionally so now you will charge 23520 that is for the third year and here 22500 so finally 
vendor thinks that this particular truck should be valued at 54,880 as per his depreciation policy, while buyer may be of the opinion that the value should be 67,500. But as we know, the vendor will consider the value of repossessed item as 54,880. So that means an item which is having a value of 67,500 is being actually repossessed at 54,880. So if I will take the difference, that will be equal to 12,620 and this is your loss. Remember one thing, purchaser will always have loss, correct? Logically, he can never ever have profit. Now, next step. Next step is value of the goods. Value of truck retained. Now, value of truck retained means the truck which is still with the buyer which is still with the buyer, correct? And we know that cost will be 1 into 1,60,000. That is equal to 1,60,000. Actually, there is no need to do any working because value of one truck will be equal to 67,500 as we have already computed. Isn't it or not? Depreciation for the first year will be 40,000. So, 1,20,000. Again, depreciation. That is equal to 30,000. 90,000. And finally, less depreciation, 22,500. I have already told you now so many times that the balance which we are going to get simply reflects the closing balance of your truck account which the purchaser would prepare later on. Is it clear to you? Now you have all the item, you have the loss, you have the value at which the item has been repurchased and loss is 12,620 and at this particular value the truck account will be at the end of the second year, a third year. So this was your question and as I already told you, we are not going to do now ledger accounts. We are simply um, giving you a sort of practice. Now we move over to the other part. 3.6, let us say what is given in 3.6. In this question, it is given that D sold three machines costing rupees 10,000 each to P on higher purchase system on 1 1 2016. So D is the seller and he has sold out 10,000 uh, three machineries for 10,000 to P on higher purchase system. Uh, paid rupees 6,000 on the above date to receive delivery of the machine. and agree to pay five half yearly installment of rupees 6,000 each. So D has sold three machines costing 10,000 each to P on higher purchase system and obviously P must have paid the down payment and secondly, and he has also agreed to pay five half yearly installment of rupees 6,000 each. So P could not pay the third installment in time and whereupon D limited repossessed one machine and P retained the other two machines. So only one machine has been taken back in this particular question and the value of the returned machine was agreed to be cash price less 40%. So please pay attention here. The value of the returned machine was agreed to be cash price less 40%. The purchaser charges depreciation at the rate of 10% per annum or reducing balance method. Now, this is the question. Suppose, could you tell me in this particular question, are you having the cash price? Yes, you are having the cash price. Are you having the high purchase price? Obviously, you are going to have the cash price because 6000 6, is the amount which you are paying as down payment and you are supposed to pay Again, five half yearly installment of 6,000 each. So you will have the higher purchase price. But in this question, rate of interest is not given. I have already told you, when rate of interest is not given, 
then calculation of interest becomes a bit of boring task, no doubt about it. A bit boring task, isn't it or not? So we will compute now in this particular question for you as far as 3.6 is concerned, correct? So as usual, first of all, we are going to actually analyze the question so that we should not commit any mistake while solving the question. That is the reason I, why I keep on doing the analysis for you just to hammer this particular mo point and just to inculcate this habit in you to uh, put up an analysis before you start what we call solving the question. You can do it in your rough work. And if you want to do it as a proper solution, then do it neatly. That is the point is. Now in this particular question, first year end, in fact, this will be the start of the year, let us say, and first installment, this is zero installment, first installment, second installment, third installment, fourth installment, and fifth installment. Correct? In this question, date has been given, that is 1-1-2016 is the date which is given to us. Question has told us that down payment is actually 6,000. Down payment is 6,000. And the next installment will become due when? The next installment will become due on 30th of June 2016 because half yearly installments we are supposed to pay. Then very next installment will become due on 30th, 31st of 12, 2016. Third installment will become due on 31st of 30th of June 2017. Fourth installment will become due on 31st of 12, 2017. And of course, your fifth installment will become due on 30th of June 2018. So these are the respective dates. Is it clear to you or not? Now, if you look carefully into the question, you will also find that you have paid, obviously the down payment must be paid. You have paid the first installment, you have paid the second installment and question has told us that installment due on 30th of June 2017 was not paid. Was not paid. Is it clear to you? That when default has been committed over here. First year is ending over here because we are starting on from 1-1-2016. Logically, the first year will end over here. That means the lifespan of this particular question is 1.5 years. We can say that point, that way round. Correct? Now, further in this question, it was also given as far as installments are concerned, the installments were also given to you as 6,000, 6,000, five installments you are supposed to pay, 6,000 and 6,000. Is it clear to you? Now, in this particular question, you must also note down that rate of interest is not given. Rate of interest is not available in this particular question. Further, it was also given in this particular question that reposition as far as reposition is concerned, out of three, only one item was taken back. Reposition, one item one machine you can say and retained two retained two the item which is repossessed was valued was valued in this question it is given was valued as at cash price less 40 percent it is given in this question in this manner that item which was revalued was valued at cash price less 40 percent while the rate of depreciation of buyer is actually 10 percent rate of depreciation of buyer in this particular question is 10 percent per annum so this is all about as far as this particular question is concerned problem is that rate of interest is not given so we are supposed to compute the rate of interest that should be our first task so when we do the calculation of interest this is your first calculation of interest. So whenever we are going to do the calculation of interest, the so first thing is that we must have interest. Now what is interest? 
difference between higher purchase price. Now, what is your higher purchase price? See, your down payment is 6,000. You can simply write 6,000 plus 5 installments. 5 into 6,000. So, that means your higher purchase price must be equal to 36,000. And from there on, you are going to subtract your cash price. Now, cash price was given to us. We purchased three items. And each item is having a cash price of 10,000. So, 30,000 is total cash price. So, that means interest is 6,000. This is your interest. Correct? Second point. After having determined the amount of interest, now we have to find out balances. Actually, you can apply the shortcut approach also. Correct? But first I will do it. First you write total higher purchase price. Now what is your total higher purchase price? Total higher purchase price is 36,000. You will subtract the amount of down payment. Down payment is 6,000. So your first balance is actually 30,000. This is your first balance. You will subtract the first installment that is 6,000. Actually, it becomes pretty cumbersome and pretty long process. So, you can easily apply shortcut approach also. If you remember, we talked about shortcut approach. I will once again do it for you. But first, let me do it in the normal manner. Then, second installment. Second installment is again 6,000. 18,000. This is your third balance. Then, first, second, third. There are lots of installments in this particular case. 12,000. This is your fourth balance. Isn't it or not? And then, fourth installment. That is 6,000 again. 6,000. This is your fifth and final balance. However, fifth installment I will have to write. And then no balance will be there. After having noted down the balances, the next thing which you are supposed to do is while calculating the interest, just wait. So you have computed the balances. In order to compute interest, in order to do the calculation of interest, first we computed the amount of interest, then we computed total balances, then C is still under step number one. Now, we will do the interest allocation. Interest allocation. As far as interest allocation is concerned, first of all, you need to know that your interest amount is 6,000. Now you have to allocate it. In order to allocate it, you will have to write the amount of balances. That is balances outstanding. And we have written the balances as 30,000. Then next balance was 24. Then next balance was 18. Then next balance was 12. And then 6,000. Now we will compute the amount of ratio. As far as ratio is concerned, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So we have computed the ratio now also. All we have to do is to now allocate what we call 6000 as the interest portion. Correct? So interest allocation. So interest of 6000 will be divided as per this particular ratio. Is it clear to you? If I am going to add it, it will be equal to 15. So 5 by 15 of 6000, that will be equal to 2000 and so on. You are going to do the working. 1600, 1200, then 800 and finally 400. So this is how you are going to allocate 6000 worth of interest. So you have determined the amount of interest. So your first task is over. 
After having determined the rate of interest, the next task is valuation of goods repurchased. This is your second step. Value of goods repurchased. How you are going to do the valuation? Value of goods repurchased. Of course, vendor. Then you are going to write here buyer. Then you are going to write here loss. Correct? How many items have been taken back? Only one item was taken back. So 1 into 10,000. This is the cost price. That is 10,000. 10,000. Correct? Now, you have to understand that vendor, this time rate of depreciation of vendor is not given. In this question, it is not given that vendor is taking back the asset at 30, less 30% 30 per annum, as was the case in the earlier questions. This time, it is clearly given that vendor is telling, I will take back this particular asset at cash price less 40%. That's all. So, however, we will have to provide depreciation. As far as buyer is concerned, its rate of depreciation, as we saw, is 10%. Buyer's rate of depreciation is 10% in the question. So, 9000 is the value at the end of the first year. Correct? And then again, he is going to charge the depreciation. Remember, when asset has been purchased, sir, asset has been purchased on 1 1 2000. Uh, what was the date? I have forgotten in this particular case. 1 1 2018, I think it was the date, whatever it is, correct? At the end of the first year, I will show it once again so that you should not commit any mistake. This was the Date is 1 1 2016. So we will reach the end of the first year that is 31st of 12 2016 till up to this point one year and after this six months. Is it clear to you or not? See, we are supposed to pay six monthly installment. So first year will end over here 31st of 12 2016. So we have to compute the depreciation till the what we call date of repossession. So first we will compute what we call depreciation for one year and then for what we call six months. So this is depreciation 1000 for the first year that is uh, I will simply write in bracket for the year ended 31st of 12 2016. Correct? And then we will compute depreciation 31st, 30th of June 2017 for the next six months. If I am going to charge depreciation for the next six months, because depreciation is on written down value, so 9000 into 10%, that is 900 into 6 by 12, that is equal to 450. So this will be the depreciation. So we may say that from the buyer's perspective, from the buyer's perspective, this particular item is having a value of 8550. However, vendor simply told less 40%. Vendor is simply telling that whatever is the cash price, I will simply reduce 40% from it. Remember one thing, once again I am trying to tell you that difference here is that in this particular question, rate of depreciation of vendor is not given. Don't think that 40% is the rate of depreciation. So that is the reason why I'm not going to compute depreciation first for one year and then again for the next six months. The vendors, in this case, it is very specifically given that whatever will be the cash price, I will take this particular item at cash price less 40%. So I'm going to simply subtract 4,000 from it. So we may say that vendor has taken back this particular item at rupees 6000. So if you will consider the difference between these two, that will give you the loss. The loss will be equal to 2550. This is your loss amount. Is it clear to you or not? So 
that is why I am doing this particular question. And as far as value of goods, value of goods retained, as far as value of goods retained is concerned, in this case two items are still with the buyer. Correct? So 2 into 10,000, first of all, you are going to write here. That is equal to 20,000. Isn't it or not? Yes, sir. 20,000. And rate of depreciation of buyer is 10%. First of all, he will charge depreciation for the year ended 31st of 12, 2016. So first year end. Depreciation at 10% will be 2,000. 18,000. Then he will charge depreciation from this particular date till 30th of June 2017. That means for 6 months. 18,000 into 10%, 1,800. For 6 months it will be equal to 900. So 17,100 will become the balance of the item which are still with the what we call buyer. Is it clear to you or not? Now, we move over to the next question. Mm -hmm. What happened? So this was the question which we have done now, correct? So here everything is given. Balance in machinery account is 17,100 which we have seen and value of the machine taken over. That means repurchased back, that is 6,000. So, and I have given the entire and full flat solution also for you. Just have a look over what we call this particular question. That is 3.7 now. On 1-1-2017, Mr. Masoom purchased from S Limited three machines costing 2 lakh each. Payable rupees 50,000 down and three annual installment of 60,000 for each machine. For each machine, three annual installment. See here, very interesting question. On 1-1-2017, Mr. Masoom purchased from S Limited three machines costing 2 lakh each. Three machines you have purchased and the cost price is actually, you can see, 2 lakh each. And down payment, each payable rupees 15,000 down, 15,000 down and three annual installment of 60,000 for each machine. So your down payment will also be 50,000 into three and your installment will be 60,000 into three at the end of each year. The purchaser charges depreciation on machine at 10% per annum on return down value method basis. This is purchaser's rate of depreciation. Mr. Masoom could not pay the second installment and S Limited took possession of the two machines. So value of the machine repurchased was to be determined after charging depreciation at 25% per annum. You can see here rate of depreciation of higher vendor is given and rate of depreciation of higher vendor is on a straight line method basis and further it is also given that s limited paid 10000 for repairs on repurchased machine and sold them for 135000 each which you can do by preparing what we call goods repurchased account is it clear to you or not you can easily do this particular question so as far as analysis of this particular question is concerned just have a look over the analysis i'm simply doing the analysis for you why i'm doing the analysis for you the reason being is that actually i have told you when later on you want to do quickly the revision of these questions correct you need not require to have a look over the question at all you can simply look into your notes provided you are writing which i have lots of doubt whether you are writing or not 3.7 Just analysis we are doing first of all You need to inculcate this particular habit of doing the analysis now, In order to do the analysis of this particular question What is happening in this particular case first let me stretch a line as I normally do 
the information in this particular question is that Mr. Masoom has actually acquired three machines. Correct? So he has acquired three machines and their cost price is cost price is for the buyer and cash price cash price or cost price you need to understand cash price is from the perspective of the seller and from the what we call buyer's angle that is cost price whatever you may like to write you can write here so cash price or cost price in this particular case we have acquired how many machines three three machines and each machine is costing two lakh so your cash price will be equal to how much that will be equal to six lakhs what will be your down payment in this particular question? So down payment will be equal to three machines are there and we are supposed to pay at the rate of 50,000. So our down payment will be equal to 150,000. Correct? So your down payment is equal to 150. Now as far as installment is concerned, one installment will be equal to, question has stated that, 60,000 per machine will be your installment. That means one installment will be equal to 180,000. Correct? One installment will be equal to 180,000. So at the end of the first year, at the end of the second year, and at the end of the third year, we are supposed to pay 180, 180, and so on. And down payment will become 150,000. Default has been committed at the time of second installment as was stated in the question. Now in this particular question, it was also given that as far as higher vendor is concerned, his rate of depreciation is 25% per annum. It is clearly given this time per annum. And as far as buyer is concerned, what was buyer's rate of depreciation? Buyer's rate of depreciation, I think, was 10% per annum. Sorry, the rate of depreciation of higher vendor is on a straight line method basis. A straight line method basis. SLM basis. It was given in the question. And what else was given in the question? So far, we haven't talked about rate of interest. So, rate of interest is given in the question. I don't think so rate of interest in this question is given. So rate of interest in this particular question once again is missing. So that is a bit of problem for us. Anyway, so this is your analysis. The first thing which you need to do is of course calculation of interest, but this time I am going to use the shortcut approach. Although, although through long cut I have already given in the solution, but you must learn the shortcut approach also because again rate of interest is not given. Otherwise, you will you will consume a lot of time in the examination. So you better equip yourself to do it quickly. So first of all, our first step to solve the question will be calculation of interest. If I am going to compute the interest. First of all, I need to have the amount of interest. What is interest? Your higher purchase price. What is your higher purchase price? You can quickly have a look from here. See, your down payment is 150000 Down payment. Down payment is equal to 150000 And you are paying three installments of 180000 each. 180. Second installment 180 and even your third installment 180,000. Now, if you are going to add all these items, it will be equal to how much it will be equal to? I think 6,90,000. So, 6,90,000 will be your higher purchase price, correct? And from higher purchase price, you subtract your cash price. Now cash price we computed earlier, 3 into 2 lakh, that is equal to 6 lakh. So your cash price will be equal to 6 lakh. So how much interest you will have to allocate, 90,000 worth of interest we have to allocate. 
Now see here, in this particular question, I am using the shortcut approach, correct? So, because generally after having found out the interest, when rate of interest is not given, so after having found out interest, generally what we do, we keep on computing the balances and then take the ratios and then allocate the interest. So, in order to do quickly, what you have to do directly, you skip that particular step of finding out the balances. Instead, you simply write in this manner, interest allocation. But for interest allocation, you need to have the ratios. So how, will, how without finding out the balances, you can have the ratios? You can find out the ratios. How you can find out the ratios? See here. First, you write here installment number. Now, how many installments are there? One, two, three. There are three installments only of 1,80,000 each. Now, you do the reversal. Just reverse them. Reversal of installment. Reversal of installment. When you will do, it will be 3, 2, 1. And in fact, this is nothing but this is the ratio on which you are going to divide the interest. So you can allocate the interest of 90,000 in this particular ratio. Is it clear to you or not? I hope this particular method will suit you a lot. Correct? Because you people are always interested in a shortcut approach. So 3 by 6 of 90,000 will be equal to 45,000. Correct? Then 2 by 6 of 90,000 will be equal to 30,000. You can see how quickly we have been able to find out the interest. Otherwise, it consumes a hell of a time, isn't it or not? So after the in interest allocation, now the next thing is that value of goods repurposed. Value of goods repurposed. Whenever you are going to compute the value of the goods repurposed, it is very important for you to keep in mind the date on which default has taken place. Correct? Of course, vendor, buyer. Now we will write here, because two items out of three have been repurposed this time, so cost will be equal to 2 into 2 lakh. That is equal to 4 lakh. So this is the amount first of all which you are going to write. And then you are going to provide depreciation. Rate of depreciation or vendor in this particular question is 25% and that is on a straight line method. As far as buyer's rate of depreciation is concerned that is 10%. But on written down value basis. So three lakh and three lakh sixty thousand. Again depreciation twenty five percent of original cost one lakh will be the depreciation a straight line method. But here rate of depreciation ten percent on written down value basis thirty six thousand. So these are the value at the end of the second year. Correct, that is equal to 2 lakh. And besides that, 2 lakh 14,000. I think it is 3 lakh 24,000. 4, 24, 3 lakh 24,000. So 1 lakh 24,000 will be your loss. Is it clear to you or not? 1,24,000 will be your loss. So, and then value of the goods retained, value of goods retained. As far as value of goods retained is concerned, value of goods retained. How many items have been retained? In this case, only one item because out of three, two items have been taken back. So one item is still with the buyer. So cost will be equal to one into one lakh, sorry, one into two lakh. That is equal to two lakh. 
and for two year because default has taken place at the end of the second year. 20,000, 180, less 10%, 18,000. So 1,62,000. So many questions we have done now, correct? So this was your question number 3.7. Now 3.8 is pretty interesting question. Just pay attention here. X company limited purchase from Y company limited three machines costing 150,000 each. Three machines have been acquired and the cost price is 150,000 each on higher purchase system on 112,017. On 112,017 we have acquired the machinery. Three machines we have acquired and their cost price is 1,50,000 each. Payment was to be made 90,000 down and remainder in three equal installment payable on 31st of 12, 2017, 31st of 12, 2018, 31st of 12, 2019 together with interest of 9%. Now together with interest of 9% this meaning should be absolutely clear. This time your installment is not gross, correct? So you will have to add 9% to get the gross installment. X company rights of depreciation at 20% at 20% on the reducing balance. X company paid the installment due at the end of the year but could not pay the next installment. And Y company agreed to leave one machine with the purchaser on 1-1-2019 adjusting the value of the other machine against the amount due on 1-1-2019. Now this is pretty easy question you can easily do. So nothing to be talk, nothing to talk about just have a look over here. First of all you are going to do the calculation of the interest because you have purchased this time three machineries. Three into 1,50,000 your cash price will be what? 4,50,000. Now question has very clearly stated that whatever your cash price is there, 4,50,000. Question has clearly stated that out of 4,50,000, you will pay the down payment and down payment is equal to 90,000. So what will be the remaining balance? The remaining balance will be equal to this much, I think 3,60,000. And question says that remaining balance need to be paid in three equal installments. So your one equal installment will be equal to this much. 1,20,000. Correct. But along with interest. Along with interest of 9%. So this will be your gross installment. Correct. So you can quickly find out now your down payment will be 90,000. You will write 90,000 over here. There is no interest in it. So your gross installment will be this much. Balance is this much. Now your first installment. Because you are not having the installment. So first of all, you are going to compute the interest of interest at the rate of 9% on 3,60,000. It will be equal to 32,400. Then you are going to add it to 1,20,000. So your installment will be 1,52,400. Cash price is this much. You will subtract the cash price. Now balance is 2,40,000. Again, you are going to compute the interest at 9%, which will be 21,600. So gross amount of your second installment will be 1,41,500. Cash price portion is this much you are going to subtract. And remember one thing here, default has been made, so no need to go further. Now, we have to find out the value of the goods repurchased. Actually, out of three items, two goods, two items have been repurchased. So cash price 2 into 1,50, you are going to write 3 lakh, 3 lakh. All you have to do is now to apply the depreciation rate. Now we are going to apply the depreciation rate. What was the depreciation rate of the purchaser of the vendor in this particular case? Let us say 30% depreciation annually on return down value basis and rate of depreciation of buyer is actually 20%. 30% and 20%. So you can apply the depreciation rate 30%. That is 90,000, 20%, 60,000. So this will be the balance at the end of the first year, correct? And then you are going to find out again the depreciation at 30% and 20%. So finally you are going to get these figures. So 
in the opinion of the buyer value is 192 while in the opinion of the vendor value is just about 147 so the difference 45000 will be considered as loss and one machine is still with the buyer buyer will apply his rate correct and his rate is 20% so 30000 balance 120 1024 so finally we can say that balance is actually 96000 is it clear to you or not now the next question 3.9 we pick up 3.9 as far as 3.9 is concerned in this but in this particular question rajesh purchased seven trucks on hire purchase system on 1st of july 2000 he has purchased how many trucks seven trucks he has purchased this time mr rajesh has purchased seven trucks correct so he has purchased seven trucks on 1st of july <laughs> just wait 1st of july 2020 we have purchased seven trucks on higher purchase uh, system the cash price of each truck the cash price of each truck was five lakh cash price of each truck into five lakh so this is your cash price correct you multiply it with that 35 lakh and question further says that he was to pay 20 percent of the cash price at the time of delivery so whatever cash price you are going to get you are going to pay 20 percent at the time of delivery that means 20 percent will become your down payment and and balance question says and balance in five half yearly installment is starting from 31st of december 2020 actually you purchase the item on 1st july 2020 and balance in five half yearly installment you are supposed to pay with interest at 20 percent per annum so after making the down payment whatever remaining balance will be there whatever remaining balance will be there that balance need to be paid in five installments correct in five installment one two three four five five installment so whatever installment you will get that will be pure installment because question says that installment together with interest at 20 percent together with interest of 20 percent means interest is your rate of the rate of interest is already given to you now question says that on rajesh failure to pay the installment due on 30th of june 2021 it was agreed that rajesh would return three trucks so rajesh is going to return three trucks basically it means actually the seller is taking back three trucks out of seven remember one thing out of seven so it was agreed that rajesh would return three trucks to the vendor and remaining four would be retained by him so four trucks are still with the buyer the returning price of the three trucks was four lakh five thousand very interesting point this time you need not require to find out value of goods repurchased from the perspective of the vendor because it is clearly given that value of the goods repurchased is four lakh five thousand from the perspective of vendor is it clear to you and rajesh depreciates the truck at 20 percent per annum and rajesh depreciates the truck at 20 percent per annum and these lines should not cause you any problem that vendor after spending 10,000 on repairs sold away all the three trucks for rupees 4,50,000. I will take your test now, correct? Do the analysis within, within first, uh, let us say within five minutes. Okay, within five minutes, you must do analysis. I will do it for you. Uh, and then we will continue. Five minutes rest.
So welcome again. I hope you must have given it a try in this question. No sir. Why? Anyway, 3.9 we are picking up. Just have a look over here. For your sake we will do this question also. Don't worry about that. 3.9 3.9 just give me a second this nib of this pen is not working so 3.9 in order to do the analysis first of all what we are going to do neat analysis must be done work should be absolutely neat tidy spick and span right the story is beginning from 1-7-2020. 1-7-2020, the story is beginning. And as per this particular story, the stallment is payable on 31st of 12, 31st of 12, 2020, because six monthly stallments are there. Then this will be your first installment then your second installment will become due somewhere 30th of june 2021 third installment shall become due on 31st of 12 2021 and then your fourth installment will become due on 30th of June 2022 and 5th will become due on 31st of 12, 2022. Correct? And in this question, we haven't yet noted down one important aspect. Sometimes the question actually gives accounting date. I think in this question some accounting date was also given. Let me have a look over this. When accounts are prepared. Anything is given in this particular question? And uh, why company spent and sold one machine for this? Machine, company account and repurchased accounts. So nothing is given in this question. Only thing is given that payment was to be 90,000 down and three annual installment of question this is 3.8 <laughs> right in the last line they have written that books are closed on 30th of June each year correct in the last line this line is also given in this particular question so I had a doubt so that is why I thought better to go through the question <laughs> anyway our first accounting year will end here, no doubt about that. And in this particular question, what else the information was? The default has been committed on 30th of June. Correct? 30th of June, the default is committed. So that means the lifespan of this particular question is just one year. Correct? Story is beginning from 1 7 2020 and ending on 30th of June 2020. So we may say that as far as lifespan of the question is, con is concerned, that is one year. Now, because of default, the reposition will be done, and out of seven items, three have been repossessed as we saw earlier. Three repossessed. and four retained the good thing about repossession is that their value is already given the goods which have been returned back their value is given in the question itself so we need not require to work out correct four, rupees four lakh five thousand is the value And as far as retained are concerned, the buyer's rate of depreciation is 20% per annum. Now, don't ask any questions, sir, whether it is written down value or whether it is what we call on uh, original cost method. Because in this question, the lifespan is one year only, so it is not going to matter. Correct? 
after reposition it is also given that he incurred some expenses on repairs that is 10,000 and sold it for and sold it for rupees 4 lakh 50,000 so in this manner you need to actually keep all the information before you further as I also told you in this particular question seven trucks initially were acquired seven trucks correct seven trucks initially were acquired and each truck is having a cost price of 5 lakh so total cash price will be equal to 35 lakh 35 lakh now question says that out of 35 lakh down payment will be 20 percent so 20 percent down payment will be equal to 7 lakh and question says that remaining amount now what is the remaining amount the remaining amount will be equal to 28 lakhs question says that remaining amount must be paid in five equal annual installments so if i am going to divide it by five i will get the one installment that is equal to five lakh but your one installment will be five lakh plus interest that is 20 percent so this is how you have stressed correct you have sketched out the entire outline of the question so you need not require to look at the question time and again time and again that is the reason why i keep on telling you it is the best policy to do the analysis once you have done the analysis then rest of the things should be absolutely a cakewalk for you calculation of interest now if you are going to compute the interest now you tell me how you are going to compute the interest rate of interest is given Cash price is also given, so we shall write cash price. We will write gross installment, we will write the interest amount, and we will write the cash price portion also. What is your cash price in this case, sir? 35 lakh. When you paid the down payment 1 1 2020. Down payment was paid how much? 20% of this amount that is 7 lakh. No interest, entire payment for cash price portion. Gross installment will also be 7 lakh. You are left off with 28 lakhs. Then after 6 months, after six months in this particular question you will reach 31st actually 1 7 2020 was the down payment date then 31st or 12 2020 we shall write here first installment but we are not having the gross installment so 28 lakh 20 20 percent is the rate of interest i will compute 2 lakh 80 thousand for six months correct 28 lakh into 20 percent into 6 by 12 will be 2 lakh 80 and one installment which we computed earlier was 5 lakh 60 so if i am going to add 560 plus 2 lakh 80 i will get 8 lakh 40 thousand as gross installment then i am going to write here 5 lakh 60 thousand 5 lakh 60 now i am going to subtract correct after subtracting 5 lakh 60 thousand i will be left up with 22 lakh 40 thousand and then next six months will be on 30th of june 2021 in fact correct second installment <clears throat> I will have to compute the interest at 20% for 6 months. That will be equal to 2,24,000. See, rate of interest is 20%. And we have to compute the interest for 6 months. So, you straight away compute interest 10%. That becomes easier. At 5,60 plus 2,24, we will get 7,84,000. Right here, 5,60,000. 
and now we need not require to unnecessarily stress the solution because default is committed over here correct default is committed so there is no point in unnecessarily wasting time after step number one then your next step is value of three trucks repossessed value of three trucks repossessed now in this case vendor of course buyer and then loss how many trucks have been repossessed three three into what was their cost five lakh you will write here 15 lakh 15 lakh What is the lifespan of the question, sir? One year. So, if lifespan is for one year, you can compute depreciation for one year. Depreciation for one year means till up to 30th June 2021. Because this is the date of default depreciation rate of buyer was 10 percent correct so depreciation rate of buyer was uh, how much that is 20 percent sorry so 3 lakh you are going to subtract 20 percent of 15 lakh 3 lakh and i haven't subtracted any depreciation over here but try to understand 12 lakh is the value in the opinion of the buyer however the value at which the vendor repurchases the item correct is given in the question as four lakh five thousand is given as four lakh five thousand now if i am going to subtract four lakh five thousand from 15 lakh i can also know what amount of depreciation vendor must have charged is it clear to you or not so vendor must have charged a depreciation of 10 lakh 95,000 you can say. This is the balancing figure because this value is given to us in this question. So that was, that is the point in this question which prompted me to solve it. 7 lakh 95,000 will be your loss. Value of Four trucks retained. Four trucks have been retained. What is the value? Four into five lakh, that is equal to twenty lakhs. You will charge depreciation for one year depreciation at the rate of 20 percent that is equal to 4 lakh and then you can get the value that is equal to 16 lakhs clear this is how you are going to do this suppose if i am going to ask you ledgers in the books of the purchaser ledgers in the books of the purchaser so you are going to prepare a higher vendor account obviously when you are going to prepare higher vendor account let me know on 1-1-2020 I will write here buy trucks account total cash price of seven trucks was 35 lakhs if you remember isn't it and then we paid the down payment on 1 1 2000 
In fact, I am writing one one. It is one seven two thousand twenty. Two bank down payment. Down payment was seven lakhs. Then we will after the six months come to thirtieth thirty first of twelve two thousand twenty. We will pass the entry for interest due. We computed interest in the first installment. It was two lakh eighty, and then we are going to write here thirty first of twelve two thousand twenty. We'll pay the first installment which we duly paid. The first installment which you computed is actually eight lakh forty thousand. Remember one thing: in ledger, always gross installment will come over here. Now there is no point in balance carry, doing balance carry down. Why? Because accounting year will end on thirtieth of June. Is it clear to you? Because it is given in the question that uh, purchaser prepare the accounting date of the purchaser is thirtieth of June. So that is why I will come straight away to thirtieth of June, two thousand twenty-one. In fact, that is the end of the first year. Again, I am going to write here by interest. In the second installment, interest which we computed was two lakh twenty-four thousand. And then on thirtieth of June two thousand twenty-one, I am supposed to write here to bank. Second installment I was supposed to pay, but I didn't. So because of that, the vendor will take back. Some trucks. He took three trucks, and at a valuation of four lakh five thousand, at a valuation of four lakh five thousand. So whatever balance now we will get, this balance will reflect the amount which we are still supposed to pay to the higher vendor against the four trucks which we are keeping with ourselves. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, you can prepare the truck account also. Truck account. On the debit side, first of all, you will write on one seven two thousand twenty to higher vendor thirty five lakh worth of trucks you have purchased. Now you will reach the end of thirty first, not exactly the end of thirty first. You will reach the first year end thirtieth of June two thousand twenty one. Correct. As far as possible, depreciation should be provided at the end of the accounting year. So one year has gone by now. I am going to write here depreciation because our rate of depreciation is twenty percent. So I am going to write twenty percent. That is equal to seven lakh. Then on this date, higher vendor repossessed four lakh five thousand worth of trucks. Three trucks he repossessed at a valuation of four lakh five, due to which we incurred a loss of seven lakh ninety five thousand, which we computed earlier. And four trucks are with us, and their valuation we have already done. That is sixteen lakh. So this is how you are going to prepare because trucks is still with the buyer is equal to sixteen lakh, as you can see. So now this account will get closed. You can also prepare the goods repossessed account if you want. You can do so by yourself. Is it clear to you or not? So interesting question it is, and uh, then we will continue with something more in the upcoming session. I think for the day it is sufficient.